Queen tells Meghan Markle and Prince Harry they will always be welcomed back as royals. The Queen has told Meghan Markle and Prince Harry they will always be welcomed back in the monarchy after stepping down as senior royals. Her Majesty and her grandson had a four-hour heart-to-heart -heart talk at Windsor Castle on Sunday about his future in the royal family, Dan Wooden at The Sun reported. The Queen told Harry over lunch that he and Meghan would be able to rejoin the fold. A royal source said, the Queen had a lot to talk to Harry about and this was the ideal time for them to both say their piece. When Harry and Meghan announced they wanted to quit it all happened very quickly and it was very stressful for all concerned. Sunday was the first time the Queen has had the chance to talk to Harry on his own and really find out what his plans are. It was a much more relaxed environment and they were both able to speak their mind. The source revealed that the Queen was very upset about Harry and Meghan leaving the family as she wanted to see more of their son Archie. However, she is said to accept that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have made their mind up to live in North America. The Queen is protecting the institution and she is also aware of the cost of security. That is something that still needs to be resolved. But Harry is also a much-loved grandson who she has always doted on. She made it very clear to him that he and Meghan are always able to come back if they change their minds and she will welcome them with open arms. The shock intervention comes after months of turmoil within the royal family. In January, the couple announced they would be standing from senior royal life. They intended to attempt to live financially independent lives by securing lucrative commercial deals. The couple had initially hoped to use their Sussex royal brand to push deals and their own charitable endeavors. But in a surprise move, the Queen banned them from using the term royal. A major row erupted soon after, as the Sussexes released a bombshell statement with subtle digs at the Queen and other royal figures including Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie. Harry and Meghan will formally stand down from official duties on March 31. They are currently in the country ahead of their exit later this month. Queen tells Prince Harry he will always be welcome back in the firm during four-hour rift healing talks at Windsor Castle and their first emotional face-to-face -face meeting since Megxit. The Queen told Prince Harry he will always be welcomed back during four-hour rift healing talks at Windsor Castle, a royal source has claimed. Her Majesty, 93 reportedly met with her grandson over lunch to clear the air ahead of his and Meghan Markle's departure from royal duties at the end of the month. It is believed Harry walked almost two miles from Frogmore Cottage in Home Park, Windsor to the castle on Sunday after requesting a meeting with his grandmother. An insider said the Queen ended the chat by telling Harry he is much loved and will always be welcomed back, the son reported. The Queen had a lot to talk to Harry about and this was the ideal time for them to both say their piece, the royal source added. Sunday was the first time the Queen has had the chance to talk to Harry on his own and really find out what his plans are. It was a much more relaxed environment and they were both able to speak their mind. The source added the monarch is very upset about Meghan and Harry's decision to leave for North America and would love to see more of her nine-month-old great-grandson Archie. She accepts at the moment that his mind is made up and he intends to live in North America, the source added. However she also wanted to make it clear that the arrangement can only work if they do not exploit their royal status and try to cash in, that's why she wouldn't let them use the word royal for their foundation. The Queen also reportedly made it very clear to Harry that he and Meghan are always able to come back if they change their minds and will be welcomed with open arms. The alleged meeting which would be the pair's first face-to-face -face talk since Meg's it was announced, comes after Harry and Meghan's final official engagement as royals was confirmed on Sunday. The couple are set to join the Queen, Prince William and Kate Middleton for a Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey next week. It will be the first time the Duke and Duchess have appeared with the royal family since their bombshell Meg'sit announcement in January, and their last as senior royals. Harry and Meghan caused a royal crisis when they announced they wanted to step back into a dual role, supporting the Queen and earning their own money. But the plan was unworkable, and the couple are now dropping their HRH styles and stepping away from the monarchy completely, for a life mostly in North America, from March 31. Last week, 
Canada confirmed it would stop providing security for the couple when they stepped down as royals, prompting the prospect of the entire bill, estimated to be up to £20 million a year, set to fall on British taxpayers. It prompted royal expert Phil Dampier to insist the pair should not receive public money for security when they become private citizens with their own income, which is said to be millions of pounds a year. The Commonwealth Day service in London on March 9 will be broadcast live on BBC One and across the BBC World Service. International boxing champion and Olympic gold medalist Anthony Joshua will deliver a reflection, while singers Alexandra Burke and Craig David will perform. Guests of honor among the 2,000-strong congregation will include Prime Minister Boris Johnson, the Commonwealth Secretary General Baroness Scotland, High Commissioners, Ambassadors, faith leaders and more than 800 schoolchildren and young people. The Queen and the royal family will meet people involved in the service and walk past the Commonwealth flag bearers as they leave. The Duchess will attend the Endeavour Fund Awards with Prince Harry in three days' time after flying to the UK from Canada. Harry has attended every ceremony since the inaugural one in 2017, which he went to with his brother William. He went to the event in 2018 and 2019 with Meghan. Canadian police confirmed on February 27 it would stop assisting with security for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex when they step down as working royals and become private citizens after Megxit. This means the cost of round-the-clock protection for the couple and baby Archie will fall solely to the taxpayer-funded Metropolitan Police, despite the couple leaving the UK for North America. The force, which currently protects the couple at home and abroad, refused to comment on whether they would continue to do so after Megxit. Buckingham Palace declined to say if Harry and Meghan would contribute any of their own money for their protection. Royal expert Phil Dampier said the couple should not receive public money for security when they become private citizens with their own income, which is said to be millions of pounds a year. It was only a matter of time before the Canadians stopped paying for their security because they're no longer working royals and now obviously the burden will fall on British taxpayers, he told Mail Online. The Taxpayers Alliance said, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex can't have it both ways, either they're working royals with the obligations which that entails, or they're private citizens seeking independence. Kiss and Meg up the Queen tells Prince Harry he'll always be welcomed back and for our heart-to-heart to, heart to heal Meg's at rift. The Queen and Prince Harry had a four-hour heart-to-heart heart talk at Windsor Castle on Sunday about his future. She told him over lunch that he and Meghan will be welcomed back if they ever decide to rejoin the royals. A source said, hopefully it cleared the air. The Queen agreed to meet Harry for the extraordinary fireside chat to clear the air about his and Meghan's imminent royal departure after a request from the Duke. Harry's 93-year-old grandmother is believed to have ended the talk by saying, You are much loved and will always be welcomed back. Harry, 35, had discreetly strolled from his Frogmore Cottage home in Windsor Home Park to the castle, where he and the Queen shared a light lunch and tea as they discussed his future. A royal source said, the Queen had a lot to talk to Harry about and this was the ideal time for them to both say their piece. When Harry and Meghan announced they wanted to quit it all happened very quickly and it was very stressful for all concerned. Sunday was the first time the Queen has had the chance to talk to Harry on his own and really find out what his plans are. It was a much more relaxed environment and they were both able to speak their mind. Much loved grandson. The chat came amid reports that the Queen is very sad that she sees so little of Harry and Meghan's son Archie. The source added, it's fair to say she is very upset about him and Meghan leaving and she would love to see more of Archie, as would Prince Charles and the rest of the family. But she accepts at the moment that his mind is made up and he intends to live in North America. However she also wanted to make it clear that the arrangement can only work if they do not exploit their royal status and try to cash in. That's why she wouldn't let them use the word royal for their foundation. The Queen is protecting the institution and she is also aware of the cost of security. That is something that still needs to be resolved. But Harry is also a much-loved grandson who she has always doted on. She made it very clear to him that he and Meghan are always able to come back if they change their minds and she will welcome them with open arms. 
hopefully the chat cleared the air and the way forward is looking more positive. But she wanted to make certain Harry knew there were limits and the whole setup is subject to a review after 12 months. Meghan is expected to fly into London in the next 48 hours for the couple's final royal jobs together for the foreseeable future. But Archie is not expected to join them. The nine-month-old will remain in Canada, looked after by a nanny and Meghan's best friend Jessica Moroni. A new poll suggests 90% of the UK public believes the taxpayer should not pay for Harry and Meghan's round-the-clock protection if they live abroad. Canada will cease to pay the bill from the end of this month. Princess Diana's former police bodyguard Ken Wharf said, It will be sad for the Queen not to see her great-grandson but in security terms Archie is probably safer staying in Canada. Way forward looks more positive. What can't happen is for Harry and Meghan to lose their Scotland Yard officers and go private. It wouldn't be safe and they need protection more than ever. The solution might be for the Queen or Prince Charles to stump up some or all of the cost of protection and give it back to the taxpayer. This is a new situation and new ideas are needed. Harry is thought to have arrived at the castle at around 1 p.m. on Sunday and had lunch of poached salmon and salad with the Queen. Their talks went on throughout the afternoon, with only Her Majesty's dogs as witnesses. They finished after a tea of scones and cucumber sandwiches. One source said Harry was seen leaving deep in thought. Meanwhile, William, who spat with Harry reportedly triggered the royal fallout, was watching his team Aston Villa lose the Carabao Cup final to Manchester City at Wembley. Harry and Meghan will join William and Kate, the Fab Four as they had been known the Queen, Charles and Camilla at the Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey next week. It will be Harry and Meghan's last duty as senior royals and the first time the couple have appeared with the family since the son revealed their Megxit plan in January. On Thursday the pair will attend the Endeavour Fund Awards at Mansion House in London which recognises the bravery and achievements of wounded and sick servicemen. The following day Harry will be at the opening of a new Silverstone Motor Racing Museum with Lewis Hamilton. And on Saturday Harry and Meghan are guests at the Royal Albert Hall for the Mountbatten Music Festival, which raises funds for Royal Marines charities. The following day Meghan will take part in events to mark International Women's Day. Harry's aides say the couple will return regularly to the UK, with him attending the London Marathon in April as its patron. Both will be at the Invictus Games, the sporting event for wounded servicemen that Harry created, at The Hague in the Netherlands in May.